Hello friends, today we will discuss about colorimetry. First of all, let us learn what colorimeter is. Well, a colorimeter is an instrument which is used for the measurement of color substance in a solution and the process by which or the principle on based on which the process is achieved it is termed as colorimetry. So basically what is the need of a colorimeter and why colorimetry is so important. It so happens that if you consider some colorless liquid for example the extraction of DNA, the extraction of RNA, they are colorless liquid. Now you have to determine the amount of DNA or RNA which is present. You can't do so th without the help of colorimetry. This is the place where the study of measurement of content with the help of light becomes important and colorimeter is the savior in this case. The instrument is operative in the range of visible light or the electromagnetic spectrum. We know that light has several parts that is the visible light along with the infrared and ultraviolet domain. In the colorimeter the domain of light is varied and the infrared and ultraviolet light is also of importance. Photometry well, photometry is the measurement of light. It involves the color of light as a function of its wavelength and the wavelength changes alteration color is detected. Color substance has the property to absorb light in relation to their color intensity. A solution or comp uh, yes, a solution with low color intensity will absorb low color or light from the uh, surroundings while a solution with high color intensity will absorb maximum possible light from its surrounding. The color intensity absorbed by the solutions is proportional to the concentration of the color substance that are present in it. The instrument which we use in this method is colorimeter or it is also termed as photometer or absorptiometers. The color intensity in a solution is measured by the help of two laws, the Beer's law and the Lambert's law. So let us see what the law states. I have already discussed what colorimetry is and in this part uh, you can screenshot this for your note, noting purpose or the definition is available here. Well, the principle on which a colorimeter works, well the principle directly states that when a monochromatic light passes through a color solution, some specific wavelength of light are absorbed which is related to color intensity. Monochromatic light refers to a single light of definite wavelength. In the visible light which we always encounter, there are seven colors present. That is the Vibgeo, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. So this is a combination or mixture of several lights. But when we take into consideration monochromatic light, it will be a single light at specific wavelength. That is either the violet, indigo or any of the specific light. It so happens that when you pass the light through a solution, the amount of light which we transmit is not received at an equal amount. This is so because a part of the light is absorbed by the substances present in the solution. By measuring the difference in this amount of light sent and received, we are able to calculate the amount of light absorbed and putting this value in formula, we are able to find out the concentration of the solution. So, Beer's law. What Beer's law state is that the concentration of a substance is directly proportional to the amount of the light absorbed or inversely proportional to the logarithm of the transmitted light. Here we can easily conclude from Beer's law that the amount of light absorbed is directly proportional 
to the concentration of the solution here you can see in the two graphs it is shown with the increase in concentration in the amount of light absorbed increases and thus a linear graph inclined at an angle is achieved on the other hand what lambert's law dominates or contributes is that when a ray of monochromatic light passes through an absorbing medium its intensity decreases exponentially as the length of the light path through the light absorbing material increases well this is little lengthy and complex so let's take into consideration an example that suppose you start walking to reach your friend's house at the initial time or initial phase of working you will have more energy and you will walk speedily but after completing 5 kilometers of distance of constant walking your speed will slowly decrease in the same manner what lambert's law states is that if the length of the solution that is the container in which we hold the solution or keep the solution if it has a say length larger than <coughs> consideration with the increase in length what happens the absorbing media in absorbs more intensity of light or the amount of light absorbed will be more and if we reduce the length of the holder the absorbance of light will be reduced you can see in this diagram it is clearly even and the path length which is b if you increase it more the amount of light absorbed by the concentration on the solution will be more but if we are able to reduce this we can easily reduce the amount of light absorbance now which method or law to be followed was a confusion when scientists developed a new scheme or an easy method to overcome the problem because an instrument when made it should be universal and it should be such that it does not contain any dispute so in this case it's the combination of bl lambert's law was used it was seen that if we keep the length of the holder constant then the inversely proportional factor of length diminishes there will be no problem that is for example take the, in the world there are so many color companies that are making colorimeter now if all the companies have a fixed dimensions for their cuvette cuvette is the holder or the vessel in which we pour the solution then the length will be constant in every cases and thus the inverse proportional factor will be not a problem so the combined bl lambert's theory is thus expressed as the amount of light transmitted through a color solution decreases exponentially with the increase of increase in concentration of the color solution and increase in the path length of cuvette or thickness of the color solution now you can see the relationship between absorbance and transmitters in this figure you can see at the first phase the light which was emitted from the source or which we put on the solution is i not while the light intensity which we receive is i the intensity of light received is less than that of the light which was transmitted which implies that there is an absorbance of the the light by the solution here you can see the basic principle which we already discussed how colorimetry is achieved so you see from the light source the light is emitted on the cuvette again i am saying cuvette is the apparatus in which we pour the solution for measuring their optical density the amount of light which is transmitted from the cuvette after absorption is detected by a photo detector and the photo detector gives us the value of the absorbed light sorry of the light intensity which it received now you can take into consideration in this image what happens is that on the cuvette i not amount of light is thrown or 
show cost and I a amount of light is absorbed while I t is given out. So it simply implies that the sum of I t plus I a will be equal to I naught. The components of a colorimeter very well we will have a tungsten lamp or a light source from which the light will be condensed and focused by a slit on the condensing lens. From the lens the monochromatic unit of light will fall on the filter and after passing through the filter it will pass to the cuvette. Just after the cuvette space the photo cell or photo detector is present which will measure the amount of light which passed out of the cuvette and give us the reading. Well this is a picturetic diagram and this diagram the parts of a colorimeter it's a diagrammatic view which you can use for your exam purpose. The parts of a colorimeter as I already discussed are the light source, lead, the condensing lens, filter and their functions I have already discussed. The cuvette or sample holder which we were speaking for long is one of the most important part because you see it has a quality that it will allow all the light which is incident on it to pass without absorbing a single percentage of it. It is made up of special glass or plastic or quartz material and is the most important part of the colorimeter. It has a definite uh, diameter of 1 cm because we have already discussed that the length of the cuvette has been made constant so that there is no confusion regarding this. This is a diagrammatic picture uh, of the external view of a colorimeter and you can see the various parts which are present in that is the wavelength section, the printer button from which we can print your print out our data, the concentration factor adjustment where by rotating it we can adjust the concentration at which we want to pass the light. Now how do we prepare a solution for investigation? For example, we have a solution of whose optical density we have to measure, but we do not know or have any reference to it. Now we have to find it out. So in this case what we can do, we will take two separate tests for one is a blank that is which will contain only distilled water and the another is a standard where we know the concentration of a compound and use it in solution form. How we will do is that a standard you can see is a solution of a known concentration of substance. In this case what we will do first we will measure the optical density of a known substance. With this what happens both the OD and concentration which we know and the concentration can be calculated easily it will give us a reference. Following which we will take blank that is to the purpose of blank solution is to eliminate the effect of light absorption by the reagent used. When we use the blank we make the colorimeter adjusted for the absorption of light in the next phase. After that what we do is a test solution which we are provided or which we will make as per the standard protocol in a specific volume and then put in the cuvette for testing. Following this what we will have, we will obtain three values and from which we will be easily able to find out our OD. Now coming to the formulas, if we consider we have two formulas which I already said the Pierce law and the Lambert's law. The Pierce law implies for A proportional to C into length while the Lambert's law implies for A proportional to K into C into L. If we combine both this formula after derivation what we get at the final stage is this formula where a concentration is given by T minus B by S minus B into amount of solution by volume of T into 100. The, please screenshot the images of the for derivation of formula and analyze it's not tough it's really easy just involve some deduction. Well, 
the applications of colorimeter why and where are colorimeters used it is most widely used in hospitals and laboratory for estimation in biochemical samples of plasma serum cerebrospinal fluid urine even you might sometimes think that many a times if people go to a pathology lab and give your blood urine and how do they calculate the presence of vital components in them well all these are achieved by the simple principle and application of colorimeter it is also used for the quantitative estimation of serum components as well as glucose protein and other various biochemical compounds and also used in food industry by various manufacturers of paint and textiles to check if the product is of required quality or not they are also used for testing water quality to screen the presence of chlorine fluoride cyanide and various other minerals present and in other cases they are also used to determine plant nutrients in soil or the hemoglobin in blood and identify standard and counter deficient drugs the advantages of colorimeter is that it is inexpensive or it is you can say cheaply available and it is very well applicable for quantitative analysis of colored compounds its size is small which allows us to transport it easily from one location to another well its disadvantages are that it cannot be used for colorless compounds it does not work in the uv and ir regions at the very beginning where i already mentioned that it only works in the visible color range we cannot utilize the ultraviolet and infrared regions with this we end our today's class thank you